Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here, and I've got a special Master Duel series here for you. So, uh, throughout the course of playing Master Duel here on the channel, I have uh, kind of geared my content towards, I think, a lot of people who are in a similar boat that I was in when Master Duel first came out, where I had played the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG quite extensively in the past, uh, but it had been some years since I had played. I quit the game, well, I started playing the game as a kid around 2004, maybe late 2003, um, and I played uh, until 2016. In that time, I played everywhere up from the playground level to locals. Then I started to go into regionals. And then um, for a number of years in a row, I actually went to the uh, WCQs, the World Championship Qualifiers, the equivalent of nationals, uh, as well as some of the YCS tournaments, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series. And after doing that for quite a while, like I said, I took a few years off of the game and then came back here during Master Duel. And when I jumped back in, uh, there was definitely a lot to take in. <laughs> I think regardless of whether you're a returning Yu-Gi-Oh! player um, from any amount of a break, right? Whether it's a few years like I did after a long time of playing extensively, or you just played as a kid, I think regardless, coming back into uh, modern Yu-Gi-Oh! through Master Duel can be a bit daunting. So um, I've geared a lot of my content towards, again, people who are in a similar situation I am where uh, coming back to the game, being a little bit familiar with it, um, and trying to get into uh, the competitive current modern scene. But I also wanted to take uh, the opportunity, I've wanted to do this series for a while, to slow it down just a little bit, take a bit of a step back, uh, and start from scratch. As you can see, uh, this title screen looks a lot different than it probably <laughs> does for most people. Definitely a lot different than I'm used to seeing. Um, and I've got even a new name here, Hexlex F2P. Yeah, so this is a brand new alternate account that I've created, uh, and I'm going to make this account entirely free to play. And that, as the title probably implies, uh, is going to be the intention of this series. I'm going to show you how to uh, start from scratch from a brand new account and make a deck that can... Ideally, I'd like to hit Diamond with this account. Probably not this month, it's towards the end of Season 12 at the time I'm recording this, but maybe, maybe in Season 13 uh, we can try to hit Diamond with this brand new account. Uh, and, you know, free-to-play is going to be the name of the game here. Uh, we're not going to be spending any IRL money. I'll show you how to maximize the in-game uh, currency that you get to build a deck that can take you potentially all the way up to diamond level. So, I'm currently fresh off of the tutorial, which I actually skipped. If you're new to the game or need a refresher, I would definitely recommend taking a look at that uh, for sure. But I obviously have been playing the game consistently for almost a year now, uh, in addition to my previous experience with it. So I just went ahead and skipped that tutorial, uh, and I am just on the menu screen after doing that here. So I haven't clicked anything else except I got rid of all the notifications here. So if we go to our missions, uh, you know, the game it is going to start us off with a thousand gems, so that's pretty rad. Now if we go over here to missions, uh, you can see that we're actually in the midst uh, currently of the 50 million downloads uh, campaign, so I get another 1,000 gems from that, so that's very nice. Uh, over here on daily, these are going to be our daily missions, uh, destroy a card, normal summon a monster, duel in solo mode. Uh, ideally, if you want to be, you know, maximizing your free-to-play account, you'd complete these every day, uh, but these do also stack, so you don't have to do all three every single day. Uh, necessarily log in that's going to be once per day we'll go ahead and grab our 20 gems from that and then we also got a lifetime award you can also just claim all of your awards you know down here um, that's going to be you know increasing our level for the first time is going to get us 500 gems so that's pretty nice so as you can see right off the bat we have over 2,000 gems uh, to start off with now the game does give you like you know just a couple of starter decks um, I wouldn't really worry about these. Also, when the game asks you to pick one of three starter decks, don't don't worry too much about that. You'll be able to get all three, um, but honestly, none of the three are particularly that great. Like, you're not going to be missing out on a huge advantage by not picking, uh, you know, a certain deck there. So, I just picked Link Generation. Now, there is one kind of slight ulterior motive I have with this uh, free-to-play series, and that's that I kind of want to build a hero deck. <laughs> um, because heroes are kind of notoriously one of the more expensive archetypes, and I think if I can actually build, like, a functioning hero deck, like, that alone will show that, you know, with those materials, you can even build, like, two or three decks, for the amount of materials it would take to build a hero deck. So, um... You know, it's, it's, it's something that's a little expensive on the main channel, but maybe with all the materials here on this, uh alternate account we can go ahead and do that there so um, we'll see though we'll see I'm not gonna try to force heroes necessarily if I don't open particularly well but these first packs that we're gonna open are gonna be a huge determinant of what direction we go into uh, now let's see I'm gonna go to the shop next because uh, this is I think the intimidating part for a lot of people is like what deck do I start building like where do I start as far as like uh, what to choose from 
Um, you know, the game is actually, you know, it shows you like, hey, you know, here's a shop, here's packs, structure decks, and bundle deals. So uh, the bundle deals, I think, are going to be the first place we want to go here. Um, let's see, that's going to be over here. Uh, so these bundle deals contain some pretty powerful staple cards here, right? Ash Blossom, Forbidden Droplet, Imperm, Sol Judge, or Lightning Storm, particularly Ash Blossom and Infinite Permanence. But more than that, they're also going to contain 10 Master Jewel packs uh, for 750 gems each, which is actually a really, really good rate. Um, because normally a 10 pack of uh, packs is 1,000 gems. So to get a good staple card and then also 10 packs for 750 gems, definitely a very good deal. Uh, we're also going to want to get this dual pass too. Um, because that's going to give us some free ultra rare craft materials. Uh, we are, if you look at the main menu here, we're, we're 34 days. They typically release the dual pass at 70 days, so we're about halfway through it. That said, it's really not that difficult to complete the dual pass. Um, I think I remember seeing on the subreddit once that if you win, what is that, like about 125 or 126 games, like 126 wins will complete the dual pass, which sounds like a lot, but if you also factor in losses, um, then it's about 200 games, and if you figure you play about 10 games a day, that's like 20 days. It's not that bad. It's, it shouldn't be that hard to, uh, finish that there. So, let's see here. Um, I'm trying to think actually which things, which, um, which bundles I want to go into first here. Uh, definitely don't start off by buying any of these packs. You definitely want to do the bundles first. And, and don't worry about accessories. Like, for the free-to-play series, I'm going to ignore all these accessories. These are obviously... Um, cosmetic only and don't actually affect gameplay. So um, I'm going to start by buying the dual pass. I think this is always a safe bet because it's going to get us our, we're going to make our gyms back and it's going to get us ultra craft materials like no matter what deck we play. So uh, I'll start by getting the gold dual pass there. I think that's always worth it. For bundle deals, the first one I'm going to get is Ash Blossom because Ash Blossom goes in literally every single deck I think I've ever built in Master Duel except for like maybe one or two. Uh, but, you know, literally 98% of decks play this card, so uh, I'm definitely going to buy that. Um, and that's going to get us 10 booster packs here as well. So these master packs are probably, I don't know, they might end up being determinant on what we actually end up, like, what direction we end up going in for our deck here. Um, nothing too great in this pack. Uh, no, like, you know, clear, strong indications. We're looking mainly for, like, ultra rare and super rare cards to kind of pull us in a certain direction, but uh, these definitely are not going to be it. Uh, generally speaking, I don't advise buying master packs outside of these bundles, uh, not just because, you know, they're not at a discounted rate, but also on top of that, um, the master pack contains literally every single card in Yu-Gi-Oh!, whereas every other secret and selection pack are more focused on certain archetypes, so... Uh, we'll talk about that here a little bit uh, after we open these packs. But again, for the bundle's sake, I think it is worth it to get these. Well, we got a Goblin Circus. This card is not good, even though it's a super rare. I would not really bother with it. As far as knowing like what cards are good and bad, I mean, that's obviously going to come with a lot of experience. If you're brand new to the game, uh, it's going to be a bit more difficult to tell. Um, generally speaking, I would advise against uh, dismantling any super rares or ultra rares if you don't know what deck you want to build, or just don't know much about the game in general, I would just highly advise not uh, dismantling stuff until um, you get a clear idea of what you're looking for. A couple more super rares here. Uh, those are going to actually unlock some secret packs, and funnily enough, the Destiny Hero Dogma pull is really good for us, because uh, us in particular, as in we're looking to build a hero deck, um, and so that is going to enable us to uh, unlock the hero secret pack there. So that, that's not too bad. Um, this Shino Baron, I'm not really too interested in that at all. Um, honestly though, even the Destiny Hero Dogma is not like card I'm actually looking to put into my deck. Uh, it just unlocks the secret pack. You might have seen when I pulled that card, um, you know, I got a little uh, key icon over here. The way that, you know, getting certain packs and certain decks works in Master Duel, uh, in addition to crafting cards, of course, is that um, when you open booster packs and get certain cards, uh, opening cards of super or ultra rare rarity will unlock the secret pack for that archetype's card. So when I pulled a super or hero card, I unlocked the uh, hero secret pack. Similarly, I just pulled a super or tri brigade card, that's going to unlock the tri brigade secret pack. Yeah, again, but the Master Pack containing every single card, I think pretty much every single card in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, that's not in, like, a Legacy Pack. Uh, the Legacy Packs are, like, their own separate thing. They're always going to contain, like, generally worse cards. 
Um, I wouldn't worry about getting a lot of secret, or not secret, legacy packs. I wouldn't really worry about getting a lot of those. We'll talk about those again here in just a, a little bit when we get some, but... Yeah, I wouldn't expect anything too crazy out of the Master Duel. Uh, the Master Packs, rather. Uh, we mainly bought that bundle for the Ash Blossom. 750 gems for, honestly, the Ash Blossom alone is worth it. Ooh, we got two Ultra Rares. That's nice. I was going to say, it'd be really unlucky not to get any Ultra Rares in our first 10 pack. We got two here. Let's see what we got. Ooh, Guardian Chimera. That's actually not a bad pull at all. Uh, this is a pretty good pack, uh, the card to have packed here, the Guardian Chimera. Uh, the other Ultra Rare, the Earthbound Immortal, not so much at all. And this card is actually just garbage, but uh, the Guardian Chimera sees play in a top tier deck. It is also just generally good fusion support. Uh, the deck that I talked about wanting to go into Heroes plays a lot of fusion cards, so uh, this could potentially be a pretty, a pretty sweet pull for us here. So um, that is all 10 of our packs there. Uh, two Ultra Rares for 10 packs is, I think it's about average. Uh, I'd say three Ultra Rares is probably a little closer to average. Or I guess, I don't know, in my opinion, maybe I have better luck. I, I do feel like I have some pretty decent luck when opening packs here. So there is our first set of 10 packs there. Getting the Garden Chimera was actually pretty lucky. Uh, I didn't really have any expectations going into that, so um, it definitely exceeded my, my zero expectations. So uh, just by opening those packs there, we actually did clear three more missions, three more lifetime missions here. Uh, you can see they were all find a secret pack mission. So the game does very nicely set you up to like get a lot of gems like pretty early on. Like you can see win a duel in solo mode. Uh, we're going to be doing that here probably in the next videos when we'll be doing that a little bit and I'll be talking about that. Uh, this first video here is just going to be all about getting started with the game uh, right off the bat. So uh, we got 600 more gems. That's nice. That's definitely going to be enough for... Um, yeah, that'll be enough for another... Um, what do you call it? Another bundle there. Um, so I'm not going to solely buy into the bundles necessarily all at once. I'm kind of thinking about getting some structure decks too, which I'll talk about uh, after getting at least one more of the bundle deals. Uh, the next one I want to get is the Infinite Impermanence one. Uh, this, after Ash Blossom, I think is probably the next most used card here. Just dropped 750 gems on that. Got 920 left. Um, okay, so... Hopefully we get some good stuff out of here. If you see like a blue or like rainbowy kind of glow, that means it's guaranteed you've got an ultra in it. So uh, that's probably what I'm looking for here. But um, you know, the yellow glow means you got at least a super, I think. Uh, I've talked about this in other pack opening videos where I'm like, I'm not really clear on that, like what all this stuff means. The game doesn't really explain it to you, but it's not super important. Hey, we got another hero card, Elemental Hero Neos Alias. That's all right. So, we actually are getting some pretty good pulls for the uh, hero direction so far. To be fair, there are a lot of hero cards, so I'm pretty likely to pull hero cards in general, but... Shaman of the Tendi, not bad. This is actually another card that's used in like a top tier deck currently. Um, so that's a pretty interesting pull there. So like, when that Utopia guy appears, like, I don't really know what that means. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. Um, not super sure. Hey, we got a Sioux ship, that's fun. And a Golden Land Forever. Actually, not a bad super rare. Yeah, our super rares have not been terrible. Um, again, I'm not really expecting to get anything super playable out of these Master Duel packs. I'm mostly buying them for the staple cards and to maybe see and to, and to also maybe see if I get pulled in a certain direction. But as you can see, also by buying these bundles, we're already unlocking more missions and that's gonna give us more gems and that's all very nice. Yeah, I, I do think that this has a very nice, this game overall has a nice free-to-play experience. Uh, I've played quite a few digital card games. I've played a lot of Hearthstone, I've played a lot of Runeterra, I've played, um, I played a little Gwent, like a little, a little, little, not a lot at all. Um, and Magic Arena, I've I played, a, yeah, I've played my share of, uh, of digital card games, and I think among them, uh, Master Duel is one of the more free-to-play uh, friendly ones, definitely. Especially when the game, like, first dropped, there were a lot more, like, promotions, and you'd get, like, not a lot, lot more gems, but you'd get a few more gems just for logging in. But I think even nowadays, like, the bonuses they give you for, like, when you first sign up for an account here are, are solid enough to get started. Well, one thing that I kind of want, and one reason I kind of wanted to make this series, too, is, like, I've seen people talk about, in Master Duel in particular, like, the difference between, you know, a free-to-play deck and a meta deck. Uh, and in this game, wow, Exorcist or Pax, that's an interesting pull. 
Uh, Axis Sisters are quite an interesting deck in general. They're a very targeted deck, as in um, what they do is they specifically like to stop cards from moving out of the graveyard. So, they're, again, they're very targeted in what they do, but it's very effective. Uh, I don't think I'm going to play this deck. It's just kind of interesting that we pulled that. Um, but anyway, the main point that I'm making here is that, like, Master Duel is actually a game where there's not a lot of difference between a free-to-play deck and a meta deck. It's more allocated in, uh, or it's more determined, rather, in how you allocate your resources. So, um, you know, not all the good cards in the game are all ultra-rare and super-rare. They're not all the highest rarity. Um, honestly, to build a lot of, like, quote-unquote rogue decks, rogue being a, like, lesser tiered strategy uh, or a not as good not as competitive strategy it's often about the same like base materials to, to build a deck like that from scratch as it would be to build certain meta decks now, there are meta decks that are more expensive than others there are also some rogue decks that are like way more expensive than any other meta deck the heroes the deck i keep talking about for example uh, that deck is not like it's not bad by any means, but it's definitely not one of the like the, the top tier decks at all. That said, it costs about two to sometimes three times as much as any other top tier deck to make. So, um, yeah, it's definitely not necessarily going to be determined on the quality of the cards uh, all the time there. So, uh, that bundle was pretty mad. We got one ultra rare. It was interesting, but not overall uh, something I'm going to be playing a whole lot in the future there. So, uh, we got one more mission unlocked. I think that should get us another 200 gems here. Yeah, 200 gems. So uh, now we have a little over a thousand gems. So at this point, I could, in theory, go into uh, another bundle here. Wouldn't be a terrible idea. I think the next one I'd probably go into would either be Forbidden Droplet or Lightning Storm. I think you're about equally likely to play either of these cards. But another thing that I'm kind of thinking about doing is picking up a couple of these structure decks. So structure decks can also be a very good way to get started uh, if you're looking for just like a direction to go into. Um, as far as like which of these is the best um, and how they work, well, basically it's 500 gems and you get, uh, if you click the contents here, you get this 40 card deck and 5 card extra deck. Um, and that is true for any of these, you can buy up to 3 of them. Um, so again, as I was about to say, as far as which ones are the best, the one I actually just clicked on, Burning Spirits here, is probably the one I'm going to go into, uh, the Salaman Great deck. Uh, of all these decks here, it is the most competitively viable. Um, it's not like a top tier deck, but it'll definitely get you to Diamond, pretty like for sure. Um, and it might not be like one of the best decks, but it's definitely up there. Uh, I would call this a lower tier 3 or like upper rogue tier deck. Um, if you're looking for a more detailed breakdown of a tier list, you know, feel free to check out my channel. I've got plenty posted on here, but um, these are the cards you get in the deck. The main ones that I'm looking for here are like, you know, the Salaman Great cards themselves. Uh, the Cyanet Mining is also a particularly good card, not just for this deck, but also for um, just in general um, Cyber Stacks. So if I was going to play like another Cyber Stack like Code Talkers or Attic Nister, Cyanet Mining would also be pretty good. Uh, if you don't want to play Salaman Greats, the next one I'd probably recommend is the Dragon Maid deck. Uh, this deck is also pretty solid. Um, it's also what I would call like an Upper Rogue tier deck. Um, it's not quite as strong as Salaman Greats, but it's not too far behind either. Uh, you also get powerful generic cards in the form of the Heretic Seal. Uh, this Link monster is good for pretty much any dragon deck. Same with the Red Eyes Darkness Battle Dragon is good in just about any dragon deck at all. So, uh, if not Salaman Greats, I'd probably recommend Dragon Maids. The Zombie Structure deck that actually most recently came out is not too bad either. Um, if you're just into zombies in general, like you've planned to build literally any kind of a zombie deck, then I would absolutely recommend picking up this deck. It's going to contain Yuta Zombie as a notable ultra rare. Uh, this card being able to send zombies from both hand and deck to the graveyard. Uh, it is also a tuner, so this is good in just about any zombie deck. Same with Zombie World. This is literally good in every single zombie deck. Um, not only does it turn all of your stuff into zombies, but more importantly, your opponent's stuff. That'll let you bring your opponent's zombies back with some of your cards. Uh, it'll also let you shut down certain strategies that revolve around having a specific type, because obviously that type is not going to be on the board if everything is zombies. So... Uh, those are kind of like my top three recommendations as far as structure decks to buy into. Now, before we actually buy into any of those, though, before I actually buy anything else moving forward, uh, the other thing I want to talk about, the other great way to get ge gain gems, uh, not just from the lifetime missions, as I alluded to, is the solo mode here. Now, you can see we just have to win a few games in solo mode to start really raking in the gems there, as well as some good crafting materials as well. So uh, that's going to be what I work on next here. Um, I think I'll do a little bit of that here on the channel. 
Um, I, I don't think I'll record necessarily all of the games that I do here in solo mode, but um, I'll record a few of them. So this is just very briefly explaining solo mode. The gist of how it works is like you complete scenarios and duels. Uh, sometimes the duels will set you up in a specific situation and they'll tell you like how to proceed. And sometimes it will just uh, have you duel freely with your deck uh, in order to um, gain various rewards there. So um, we completed the tutorial. Actually, I skipped this again. If you're new to the game, obviously you want to do this. But if you're returning... Um, this is like the very basics of the game. So if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh, um, you know, pretty much at all, you can skip this. But as you can see, you've got others here in dual training. This is all very, very simple stuff here. It's going to be like, you know, how to tribute summon, um, how to, like, you know, how to, um, yeah, this one is just, you know, explaining tribute summoning and, how, you know, reducing the opponent's life points. Uh, this explains attack and defense mode. Uh, it's going to give you some pretty good staple cards. These first two, Raigeki, um, is a pretty good card, uh, as well as Monster Reborn here. Uh, both very powerful cards there. So, uh, obviously you want to complete these not just for the card rewards, but for the gems as well. And then beyond just the tutorials, there are also, like, some story solo modes here as well. Uh, that'll tell you kind of, like, the story behind some cards. And uh, you, you've got more, like, duels. Uh, these ones are going to be more, like, you know, free. Like, you're going to have to actually use, like, a deck you build. You can also use a loner deck, but um, mainly the reason to complete these and the main reason to use your deck is at the end of them, you actually get 200 gems for finishing uh, the solo gate with your deck. So uh, these, like, tutorial solo mode stuff, I'm going to do these off screen. Um, but the story mode ones, I might do, maybe not all, but at least some of these on camera. So I definitely recommend doing those before you go about building your first deck, which I think I'm going to actually do after I complete these off screen. Um, for the meantime, this is where we're going to stop this first video here. I just wanted to show off like the first introductions to Master Duel, to the shop, and what I think are the best very first things to buy and then do. So again, uh, my recommendations for when you first create an account here in Master Duel are to go over here to uh, Special, grab yourself the Duel Pass, uh, and then also grab yourself the Ash Blossom and Infinite Impermanence bundle deals. Um, after that, you're going to want to, like I said, pop over here to the solo mode. And then from there, complete the two, uh, after you complete the tutorial, rather, complete the dual trading, which I am, as I said, about to do uh, off screen here. So that's going to do it for the very first part of the Master Duel free to play slash beginner tutorial series. Uh, I want to thank everybody else, or everybody else, I want to thank everybody in general for watching um, all the way to the very end here. Um, even if you're already a seasoned Master Duel player and you, for some reason, watch this, <laughs> thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. Um, again, this is just going to be like the very basic intro video. Uh, moving forward, we're definitely going to get into the nitty gritty. Uh, we're going to be doing some actual games, uh, both in solo mode, and I'll probably do some uh, here in like, yeah, against other players in uh, beginner mode as well. Um, yeah, and I think that's about all the time I've got for today. So without further ado, uh, this is Hexlikes. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.